money. I do shit for niggas and they act like they don't love me. When I turn my head, it's your girl Pretty Lil Ray back at it again with another video. I know I've been gone for a little while. Your girl went through boot camp and she's back in business so obviously y'all can see by the title today's video i'm gonna be telling y'all about my boot camp experience so i got a lot of different notes on my ipad um i have my notebook from boot camp that has like all the stuff that we did every different day i also have my journal too where i like wrote different um days like how i felt what was going on all of that so i'm gonna go into all of that with y'all this video might be a little long but it's gonna be worth it all right y'all so i left september 14th i went to the hotel september <laughs> i left for boot camp september 14th but i went to the meps hotel or whatever september 13th so i went to the hotel or whatever we chilled it was basically like another meps went to meps um did we do a drug test? I honestly don't remember if we did a drug test or not. I know we did a pregnancy test for sure. Females will a pregnancy test. We just chilled and yeah, waited to ship out. It wasn't it wasn't really too much. It's literally like another MEPS experience over again, just without all of the extra physical stuff. So now let's get into the airport, all that stuff. So I was flying from ATL to Chicago. If you notice the camera view change, storage. I ran out of storage. I love that for me. I barely even started the video and it already it's already over. But anyways, so got on the plane. I'm gonna show y'all some videos too, so y'all can see a little bit of a little bit of something. So we got to this part in the airport, O'Hare Airport, and I remember they asked us. They was like, "You going to boot camp?" We was like, "Yeah." And so we went to the specific part in the airport. I don't remember where it was, but it was like some, I don't, I don't remember if it was RDCs. I don't think so. Cause they was, they didn't have red ropes, but it was like some petty officers there and they was asking us different questions. I don't know what they told us to do. I think they was like, put your phone up in the air, something like that. They gave us masks. I don't remember what they said to us. I just remember they all, told us to all sit down and we was like sitting in formation, like we was sitting in rows. And then we waited for the bus to get there. The bus came and got us. I was like, oh my God, like I'm really doing this. Like I remember the whole time I was thinking, I'm like, what is going on? I have my book, what was it? Like the star guide. And so they was like, get your star guide out if you have your star guide and like study it. Like, you know, study your general, your general orders, all of that stuff. So I was doing that. And then the bus came, I was like, oh, it's real now. So got on the bus, Um, they were like, don't fall asleep none of that good stuff don't use your phones people was using their phones though but like you got to be slick with it if you in the front obviously you can't use your phone but if you in the back you better make them little last texts the little last phone calls like you better because you know what i'm saying might as well don't tell nobody i told you that though but yeah on the bus there was like screens like tvs and they had like general orders it had some guys talking about like you made the choice to join the I don't know if I don't remember if they were saying like you made the choice to join the Navy or you made the choice to join the military. I don't know what they were saying, but it was like some guy on there. He was just talking and the same message just kept playing over and over and over again, along with the general orders. I think the ranks of recognition, all of that stuff, just like playing on the screen. I'm like, I studied this stuff before. It's so like kind of already, you know what I'm saying? Kind of know. Oh, the Seventh Creed too. That was on there too. That was on there too. But yeah so i remember looking out the window because i was trying to figure i was like where is this place at like where is boot camp so i'm over here looking out the window mind you it's kind of dark out there so i can't really see i just see like light so i was like oh shoot we're here and we just kept driving i said never mind we're not here then i was like oh wait are we here and then i saw the bus turn i said oh so then we turned we like got in the little like where they let us off at whatever I'm like, oh, what's gonna happen? So then they're like, get off the bus, get the fuck off the bus, hurry up. I'm like, oh, this is just like what they have on the on the YouTube channel. Like it's the same thing. I was trying so hard not to laugh because I'm not gonna lie, it's funny. Like they're yelling for no reason. They be acting mad for no reason. So I'm trying not to laugh. I'm like, 
whatever okay so i'm like running not like full fledged running but i'm like little put a little pep in my step you know what i'm saying don't want to be walking everybody else running now now they're yelling at me and i just came you know what i'm saying like do a little something so i'm over here running and then they're like line up don't step on the flags while you're running don't step on the flags which if you if you haven't seen the video so you don't know what the flags are it's not actual like flag like with the little pole and stuff like that it's tiles on the ground that are flags if you watch the WooCamp video, like, that's literally what you do. Like, it's a little different, but it's the same thing, if that makes sense. Like, that part is definitely the same. So then they're like, they're telling us this stuff. Like, I'm Petty Officer so-and-so. I'm Chief so-and-so. Blah, 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 blah. And they're like, okay, take out your phone and hold it over your head. So we're like, take out our phone, hold it over our head. One, I remember one person said they don't have a phone. And it was like, why don't you have a phone? And they're like, I left it at home. I'm like, whatever. So... I say take out your phone hold it over your head did that then they was like um call your parents your recruiter whoever we don't care but call somebody and let them know you made it here safely so that's what i did and that was that yo i mean my call i better call my i called my mom and i don't think she answered my call so then i called my man and the same thing like i was I literally let that, I let it ring like two times when I was calling my mom. I let it ring like twice. She didn't answer. I said, boop, because you have a minute. So I'm like, boop, call my man. He answered. I said, I'm here. I can't talk long. I love you. Bye. And then that was it. Like, I couldn't say a whole bunch of stuff. But mom, if you're watching this, you didn't answer my phone call. You really had me messed up. I was going to be really mad if nobody answered my call, but at least somebody did, so... But yeah, so that was the last time we used our phones for the whole boot camp until we graduated. So then we went to like, um, I don't remember if we went to Diddy Issue right after that or we listened to some people talk. I think we listened to some people talk first. It's a lot of people just running their mouth a lot. A lot of boot camp is people running their mouth talking to you. But I don't remember which one we did first. But I'm just going to go into Diddy Issue because the rest of the stuff is kind of irrelevant. So Diddy Issue is really like where you get your stuff at. Like, your underwear, which we call them skivvies. Your sleepwear, which is not even sleepwear. It's literally like PT gear. Like, the same stuff you wear to go PT, you wear to go to sleep. Like, it's it's not a lot of stuff. But they give you that. They don't give you your uniforms or anything like that yet. That's later in boot camp. But they give you, like, the basic stuff you need. They give you a razor. They give you some soap um i think there's deodorant there's a few other things that they give you well it's not a few they give you a lot of stuff okay and then you're in a room with a bunch of other females and then like you're literally just taking everything off like they ask you they'll ask you like what size bra are you you tell them they'll give you the bra they'll ask you the other stuff like they just gave you your size like my shirt they said okay small your bottoms small like all of that stuff they didn't like really measure you with anything they just looked at you and said okay you're a small you're a medium and that was it then when you go in the room with all the females that's when you go and you try all your stuff on and like you're stripping butt booty naked like out of everything you put on the bra make sure the bra fit you put on the um underwear make sure they fit no you don't i don't know i don't remember if we I think we did. I think we did. I think we took one of them out the pack and like put them on to make sure they fit. I think we did. But all I know is like you literally, you trying on everything, everything, everything. And then you put all of that stuff in your sea bag. And then you get all of your civilian clothes and stuff. They tell you to put it all in this box, which is called your day box. So you put your phone in there. You put, I think they said like put your phone in there first. But I put my phone in there and then I took it out and put it on the top because it's not going to get crushed by the rest of my stuff. Absolutely not. So I put my phone on the top, like I said. I think they, like I said, they made us put it on the bottom. But um, all your stuff, your civilian clothes, I didn't bring a whole lot. But all of my stuff could not fit. I had, um, I had a book bag. It was like a what's it called, Sierra, Sierra High, something like that. I forgot what it's called. Some kind of black book bag that I had and i couldn't fit it in there so i just wound up throwing it away but i didn't really care about that book bag so i wasn't really tripping everything else fit i took everything out of the book bag put it in my ditty box including my purse 
I have my MacBook. I have my Apple Watch. I put all that stuff in there. And it all fit, y'all. It was, it was, it was kind of hard. Like I was pushing it down because you have to like tape it. So you have to make sure that it could like be taped properly. So I was like shoving it down there. I said, yeah, this, this gonna fit regardless. And it did. So it was good. Um, the rest of the stuff, like the stuff that they give you, it all goes in your C bag. And then they just talk to you. Like they talk to you for so long and it's so annoying. So push past all of that. They said, okay, you're going to go meet your RDC. They did tell us like um what division we're gonna be at while we were sitting down i do remember that they called out our last name and then they was like they would say my last name and then it was like 418 and at that time like you don't know what they're talking about you're like what 41 who what but later you'll realize that's your division and by the end of boot camp your division number is gonna mean a lot to you like 418 Shout out to my 418 people. Cause we went through a lot together, y'all. But yeah, so we did that. That was pretty cool or whatever. Um, but like I said, I didn't know what was going on. Like this is just calling out our numbers and stuff. And I was just like, okay. But yeah, so we went to go meet our RDCs. We all sat down, crisscross applesauce hands in our lap, like we was some kindergartners and waited for them to come in. We was all like scared to talk. We were scared to do anything because we're like, what's going on? So we're just sitting there. And then we, like, I think we started talking a little bit. And then we heard like the door open. Everybody said, <laughs> like we were not playing no games. We were literally just like, yeah, so. Like we was not playing. We said, absolutely not. So they came in there and they literally was so scripted. It was so funny to me because they came in like, walking you know how they be walking and then they like right face or left face whichever way i don't remember and then it was like we are your rdc's and they're like petty officer whoever like they was just doing all of this extra stuff and i'm like who taught y'all this like I, I was trying so hard not to laugh i don't know why it was so funny to me but i just could not i could not keep myself together in my head i was laughing boot camp was hilarious but boot camp was Funny. So when you first get to boot camp, like for your first week, it's called P days, right? Processing days. So first of all, oh my god, hated P days. That's like the worst part of boot camp. That's the part of boot camp that will make you be like, what? What have I got myself into? What is this? So you get there, right? And you stay up that whole rest of the day. You get there late. Like sometimes you'll get there like 10 p.m. or so. And you won't go to sleep that whole day. And then you won't go to sleep until that next night, if that makes sense. So you're up for like 42 hours straight. Don't recommend at all. It was not it. So for PAs, you're going to be in Pearl Harbor. Okay, so there's ships in boot camp. You know how you're in the Navy? So it's ships, right? You're going to be on different ships. So in boot camp, they also call them ships, but they're they're literally just buildings. Like that's literally all they are. But you're gonna be in the ship Pearl Harbor for new recruits. All new recruits go to Pearl Harbor for like the first week. Then after that first week, you'll go to your actual ship. So I was ship three, USS Grace Hopper. And they're actually named after like real ships so there's a lot of them too like a whole lot of ships it's 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 crazy the base is big it's really big and you don't really realize that until you go marching and you're like dang so for pas you're gonna get shots r.i.p you're done you're over with not just playing shots were not that bad but i'm not scared of needles like needles don't bother me like they bother some people like this one girl i know she fainted so it honestly just depends on you, but they're not that bad, but you're gonna get a lot of shots. It was just like a little prick, a little prick, but they don't really care. Like, I think there was a few times where they had us like, what's it called? No, they didn't even have us do it. They used to have like other recruits that was in our division. They would have like two recruits stand right here and then they would like wipe us down. And then we would go back in line and then wait and then they would just have us in line and they would just, they would make sure that it was us who needed the shot so they would have us say our name um birthday or some something like that and ask if we have any allergies and then they're like okay this they just stabbed you like it was just it 
PAs, you're also gonna do your banking info as well. That's not too crazy. But if you're with another bank or whatever the case may be, and you might wanna switch to another bank like Navy Federal or Armed Forces, they're gonna have somebody from Navy Federal and Armed Forces come and talk to you and basically try to convince you to join their bank. So I was already in Navy Federal, so you know, but a lot of people, they did join Navy Federal. I would definitely recommend it too. It's really good. It's a really good bank. But yeah, so if you're not sure if you want to join the bank or not, you don't really have to worry about it before you go in. Like you can, so you already have it out the way like I did. Or you could just wait until you get to boot camp. It doesn't really matter. Regardless, they're going to make sure you're taken care of. Another thing that was really good with Navy Federal, like, because I bought my routing number and account number like with me because they said to bring it. But Navy Federal already had all of our stuff set up for us. So, like, I didn't have to give them my routing number or anything like that. They already had it good. But if you had another bank, like um, Bank of America or something like that, or Delta Credit Union, whatever bank you might have, then you're going to need your routing number and your account number. But I would say bring it just in case because you never really know. You're also going to do medical and dental. So, for medical, if you're over 21, they're going to have you do a pap smear. Make sure everything's good. You don't have, what is it, cervical cancer, I think? I think that's what they check for in a pap smear. I don't know. I'm not over 21, so I don't know. I'm only 19, so don't quote me. But they're going to have you do that. Um, they're basically just going to make sure you're good. Like, it's kind of like another MIPS. Just making sure that you're okay. Um, also, dental. They're going to check, make sure you don't need your wisdom teeth removed. I actually got mine removed. Also, in P days, you do not get beat. And B is like, it's not like they whooping you you know what i'm saying but it's like exercises so you might have to do eight counts push-ups different things like that and our division got beat a lot but p days they can't beat you it's when you get your fit for full stamp which means that you're good like everything is okay with you then you start getting beat and it's over with from that point on but yeah another thing they do in p days or in the first week or so, well, first few weeks or so, is they're gonna be assigning jobs. So there's RPOC and AROC. So the RPOC is basically gonna be in charge of the division when your RDCs are busy doing something. They're gonna give instructions to RPOC and then RPOC is gonna carry that out for everybody. So it's a pretty hard job. You definitely get the hard end of the stick on a lot of things like, before they yell at the division they're gonna yell at you because you're supposed to know everything basically you, you're our part like it's no way around it they also play a really big part in graduation as well graduation and during drill inspections like they have to make all of the right calls all of the all of that stuff and they get graded heavily like they play a big part on the division score so if they mess something up they go get their ass chewed out like it, it's no way around it so there's some more jobs that you could do some of them are not as strenuous or as a hard as other jobs so laundry po is you're basically just in charge of laundry but make sure you're doing it right make sure you're taking care of business and you'll be fine like it's not that bad honestly but if something's messed up you might get beat for it like it it is what it is but honestly it's one of the least stressful jobs. Just make sure that the laundry is washed. Make sure everything is good. Nothing comes back wet. Cause our stuff used to come back wet and we have to give it back to them because you're not allowed to accept wet laundry. There's also starboard watch and port watch. And basically port watch is in charge of the quarter deck watch. So it'll make more sense when you actually get to boot camp. You'll be like, I remember when she was talking about this. But basically, you stay and watch in the Navy, right? So there's quarter deck watches, which is basically you're going to be greeting people. You might be checking IDs, things like that. Um, and then there's compartment watch, which is starboard watch's job. So basically, you're going to be in charge of security watch and roving security watch. So basically, like security watch, you're going to stand right by the door. It's like in the little, it's a little passage where you're gonna stand there. You're gonna be having, have your little cover on, you know, cover is like a hat, right? You're gonna be like, 
Good evening, Petty Officer. Seaman Recruit, you're going to say your last name. Division 418. Security Watch, standing by for further instruction. Petty Officer, you'll say that if you're doing Security Watch. And if you're doing Rovic Security Watch, you're going to be like, Good evening, Petty Officer. Seaman Recruit, your last name. Division 418. Obviously, if you're you're not going to be in 418, so it's going to be a different division. But you're going to say your division. So, Division 418. Roving security watch, standing by for further instruction, petty officer. You have to say which everything that you say. So you start with petty officer or you start with chief, and you're gonna end with the same thing. And obviously, if it's the morning, you're gonna say good morning. If it's the evening, you're gonna say evening, things like that. But that's basically the gist of it. So memorize that if you can. And you already know what to say. It's gonna be like on the wall or whatever, so you could see it, but it's better if you don't read it. And then they like to quiz you too. They like to ask you questions. So they might ask you like, recruit, who is the chief of naval operations? And then you gotta be like, you gotta stay at attention. Be like, petty officer, the chief of naval operations is Admiral Gilday, petty officer. That's literally how you have to answer the question. So section leader, they have a specific place where they stand when y'all are marching. They also have a role in basically making sure that your rack, which is like, you know, your bed, and then you lift up your bed and inside is where all your stuff is like folded. So they're also in charge of that and making sure that it's squared away at all times because there will be times where FQA, which is basically the people who come with briefcases and they inspect everything and they be looking. Sometimes they'll look inside of your rack or they'll just check around, make sure that the bathroom, AKA the head is good. Everything's on spot. So you have to be ready at all times because you never know. That's also a pretty easy job too. Yeoman, yeoman is a strenuous job. Like you're a paper pusher at all times. Like they're gonna be calling you a lot. Them starboard watch, y'all, they always called our starboard watch like every single time. They used to say, starboard watch, where's starboard watch? Starboard watch, get the fuck over here. I'm like, oh. I'm like, damn, I hate to be you girl. Like I used to tell her that all the time. Like you're a strong woman because me baby, count me out, I'm gone. But no, she was a very strong woman. She did what she needed to do. So another thing that people do not talk about enough is that walk from Pearl Harbor to your ship. Baby, like I said, I was ship three and ours was like a 30 to 40 minute walk or march. Y'all, some of them ships were further than our ships. So that could be like a 50 minute walk easily. That is not something slight. Mind you, you have your big old sea bag with everything in there including your uniforms at that point in time because you will have your nwus which is your it's your work uniform so it's going to be your camos like your camis the one that everybody knows for the military but um yeah so you're gonna have those and you're gonna have a bunch of other stuff in your sea bag and you're gonna be hauling that for however long you have to go to your shit have fun have fun because I was, I was dying. I was dying. It's that. And then you will also have a book bag, your black book bag too. Yeah, you're going to have that. And you're going to be carrying that in your left hand. Unless your petty officer or whoever is cool. And they let you put it like on the front. So you have your sea bag on the back. And then you can have your book bag on the front. But that depends because our, our chief said, no, you're not doing that. And then somebody tried to make me carry um two book bags. I said, I'm five foot. And I'm small. I'm like 90 pounds at that point in time. Y'all, because I gained weight in boot camp. If y'all can't tell, because everybody keeps saying, you got thick. Yeah, I got a little thick, y'all, because I gained some weight. So, chow, y'all. I remember the first time we went to chow. I said, what is this? We all looked the same. We all had, um, I think we was wearing what? Our yellow PT shirt with our um sweatpants our blue sweatpants and we all came up in there looking the same the guys look like thumbs because they had their head shaved so they just when i tell you all, all the guys look the same i was so confused i was so confused i did not know who was who because y'all all your hair is gone like you have nothing so i'm like who are you what's your name it took me a little while it took me a little while but after that, they let, they let you start growing out the top of your head and then they just shave like this part. So it gets better, it gets better. That first cut is what really gets people. But after that first cut, 
it it definitely gets better i could say that but no nah, you saw that but chow nobody's talking nobody's doing none of that stuff especially the first chow nobody's talking none of that stuff and everybody's looking straight ahead eating like y'all are in jail y'all are prisoners it's crazy it got a little i'm not gonna say lenient but it got a little more lenient after a while because people would be sneaking and talking and stuff but if your petty officer catch you or your chief catch you or another somebody else's rdc catches you they might chew you out so be careful be careful with that but in the beginning just don't talk just don't it's not worth it also have your family use sandbox y'all have your family use sandbox it's an app that you get i'll have it on the screen and basically they can literally just like it's like they're texting you like they just type out what they want to say it gets sent as like an actual letter and then you could just like write back or whatever it gives you paper to write back and it also gives you like their address like you don't have to write it out or nothing like that it comes with a paper that has their address and it has your name and your address like it's 10 out of 10 i recommend it i definitely recommend it because yeah i wish i had my letters here to show you guys but they're back in pensacola i'm currently on leave right now so i'm back in the a so now i'm gonna get into a few inspections that you're gonna have so the first inspection that you'll have is called dmi so dmi there's two parts there's a fold and stow and there's bunk makeup so me i got um bunk makeup so literally all i had to do was make my make my bed which i do that every day so i already know what to do it was it was good i got no hits if you get three hits you fail you could get one two that's it so fold and slow is the hard one if you get fold and slow god bless you because baby that was the hardest one if y'all know the nwus which is like i said the camis that you wear you have to unbutton them unbutton your your blouse and unbutton your trousers you have to turn them inside out as well as a bunch of other things too like there's your brown t-shirt that you wear under it you have to fold that or take that and um turn it inside out everything you have to turn it inside out and then you have i think it's 20 minutes to button everything back up turn it in like back right the right way inside right i don't know what it's called and then you have to fold everything how it's supposed to be folded and then put it in a certain way it's a whole lot and with um bunk makeup you're literally just gonna like strip your whole rack like just take everything off and you're gonna put it in a certain way on the bed and then they're gonna say you have 20 minutes to um make your rack in accordance with your rdc instruction and then you're gonna automatically go and you're just gonna make your make your bed but it's so easy it's so easy and you just get on the tow line you're gonna have a um your training guide which you're gonna get in boot camp and you're just gonna stand there and just hold it and then while they're like going around checking everybody's stuff they're gonna tell you like study your training guide and it's it's really easy if you get um bug makeup if you don't like i said god bless you because baby it is not easy that's that part people's getting hits people barely got hits on um on their bed because it's so easy like you literally do that every day but the other one mm -mm. Mm -mm. no next is gonna be pi pi is your inspections so you're gonna have one in your nwus i keep talking about your nwus which is your camis have one in your nwus or one in your nsus which is your peanut butter top which is this color and then um the black bottoms i'm gonna get pictures on the screen so you guys know a little bit more of what i'm talking about but that's your nsus and then you're gonna have one in what you're gonna graduate in and that is gonna be either your dress blues or your dress whites mine was my dress blues because we graduated in our dress blues but if you're graduating in the summer it's gonna be your dress white so it just depends on that but there's three of those first one nwus second one nsus but i did it in my nws again because i did not have my nsus at the time and then i did my third one in my dress blues so that you literally just are going to make sure that everything is good make sure that you don't have any gear drift on your on your uniform which is like little strings and stuff that's like hanging out of your uniform you're gonna like cut those off or get nail clippers and clip them off it's not hard like it's very easy just make sure that your stuff is on spot make sure that your boots are shined and they look good or make sure that your dress shoes look good if you're wearing your dress shoes um 
the NWUs is definitely the hardest one because they're gonna make sure all your buttons are good which honestly is easy but that's the one that most people like will get hits on because like for females especially it's very it's very easy the rest of the uniforms the NSU and the dress blues are very simple to put on it's not a lot to do but um so that make sure that your belt buckle all of the it's through all the hoops because they will check that too and some people were getting um like hits on that which is so stupid because just make sure that it's right just just make sure like our petty officer was getting mad when they found out that people was getting hits on that they said that's so stupid like come on now just just make sure you're right like that one the last one which is your pi3 which is going to be in your dress blues or dress whites that one you're going to come in there with your with your neckerchief if y'all know your neckerchief it's like the little tie thing you're going to come in there with that and then it's going to be tied and they're going to tell you you have a certain amount of time to untie it and then they're going to tell you to retie it and make sure that you could tie it correctly and then they're going to also make sure that that's good as well make sure it's even make sure it looks good they're going to teach you how to tie it before like a little while before then also while they're checking your uniform they're going to go and they're going to ask each one of you guys questions so they might be like who is the chief of naval personnel and then you're gonna say petty officer the chief of naval personnel is vice admiral cheeseman petty officer and then they're gonna say if you got it right they're just gonna go they're gonna say next recruit who is and they're gonna keep asking questions and then if you get it wrong they're gonna be like question and then it's also gonna be the rpoc following them around and so say that you got a question here they're gonna say question and then they're going to repeat your rack number. So say your rack number is 103. So then they're going to repeat it and they're going to say rack 103 question. So just like DMI, if you get three hits for PI, you fail. It's not it's not hard to fail, y'all. Or it's not hard to pass, like, at all. It's, it's very easy. Even if, it, even if you get a question hit, because that's usually what people get hits on is their question, you still pass. So it's like... Just do the best you can you'll be fine so i forgot to also mention there is a initial assessment which is going to be the pacer test if y'all don't know what the pacer test is i used to do it i did it in school like a few times but it's basically you just run laps back and forth back and forth back and forth it's so simple it's so easy but for us i didn't even i still don't know the actual laps that i needed my chief actually lied to us and told us that we needed 25 laps if you were 17 to 19 you needed 20 push-ups and a minute 30 plank which was all a lie y'all all a lie i did exactly 25 laps and i was dying i was dying mm -hmm. then i found out I, I only needed like 18 but I'm not gonna lie, shout out to her because she definitely pushed us because a lot of people, they thought they failed. Like they got like 20, 21 laps and they was crying their eyes out because they literally thought that they failed. And then she was like, so you actually didn't fail. You actually passed because you only needed 18 laps. I'm like, you really did this like that, huh? But like I said, I appreciated it. So I wasn't that bad or I wasn't that mad, but it was what it was. So for that, you're just gonna, it's basically just to see where you're at, but you can fail. You definitely can, but it's, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. I don't know the exact numbers that you need, like for push-ups or planks or anything like that. I don't know the real numbers. I only know the fake numbers that she told us, which was actually like OPFA standard for 17 to 19. I don't know about anything else, okay? I can't tell y'all. There's also the RDC assessment. For the RDC assessment, that's the one that happens in your fourth week of training. And basically with that, it's basically like the OPFA, but for the run, you have a 90 second buffer. So for me, for the OPFA, I needed 1445 because I'm 19 years old. So from 17 to 19, you need 1445. So for the RDC assessment, I needed like 1615 or something like that. And I think I got like 15 minutes. No, I did not. I got like, no, I didn't. I got 14.50 for the RDC assessment. So I was literally five seconds off from the 
OPFA standard. Mind you, if you don't get OPFA standard, they stamp your um they stamp your there's you get a hard card that has like all of the things that you've done and it's gonna have stamps for every single thing like firefighting everything you're gonna get stamps so they're gonna put a red stamp and it's gonna say rdc assessment fail even though you actually passed you just didn't get opfa standard it's it's weird but that's the rdc assessment so everything else is still the same like push-ups i needed 20 push-ups like i would need for the opfa and i need a minute 30 plank like i would for the opfa so everything else is the same you just get a 90 second buffer on the run um the RDC assessment is when you will lose a lot of people. If you fail the first time, you get a makeup, which is like a few days after. And if you fail again, you get set back. So we were going on to week five. And if you got set back, you went back to a division that was in week two. So don't get set back. I'm telling you that right now. You better run. You better run like your life depends on it because it does. Earlier, like before the RDC assessment, you're going to also do your swim. The swim is really easy. Like for me, I already knew how to swim. So, I mean, I'm not really the best person to talk to about that. But for the swim, they're gonna, it's literally on YouTube. Like just look it up. They're literally gonna push you off of a, not diving board, but a diving board. And then you're gonna just like fall into the water and then you just swim however you can. It's like three different ways you can swim. Either like on your back, the little, you know, this swim or I forgot the other swim, but there's three swims that you can do. Y'all, the first time, why did I fail? Why did I fail? I literally failed, but if you fail the first time, but you could actually swim, you could retake it the same day, if that makes sense. So I retook it the same day because I literally made it halfway. But y'all, I was going, like I was going. My job, I tried to swim under the water. I thought they wasn't gonna say nothing to me because I'm an underwater swimmer. I like to swim underwater. So I started swimming underwater and they said, they said, stop swimming underwater. Get on your back. Because if you mess up on any of the swims, they tell you to get on your back and swim on your back. So I started swimming on my back. And mind you, it's a long way you have to go. So I'm over here like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like going. I'm trying to go. I'm trying to be done. And y'all, I got tired. Don't go too fast because you will get tired. I got tired and I couldn't do it anymore. Like I just couldn't. So I just like let myself go down and then they like saved me. And he was like, I know you could swim because you wouldn't have made it this far. So basically what happens is if you fail the first time, like when everybody is together, they're gonna give you a second chance. So you're gonna go over to the kiddie pool and you're gonna swim over on your back. And if you do it, they're going to let you go and retake it. But if you just can't swim at all, then they're gonna start giving you lessons. And then you're gonna have to keep going to lessons until you actually are able to pass. But for me, I went over to the kiddie pool. I, I swim on my back with ease. Cause like I said, I know how to swim. So then they let me go retake it. And then that's the time where I had to slow down. And then it was the guy who was standing on the edge, the one who like had to save me. So he was like looking over the side of the pool and I went past him. And I was listening to her. I was singing Rod Wave in my head too, y'all. That was what was helping me get through it. And um, he was like, slow down more. He's like, you're doing good, but slow down more. So I started slowing down more. I was just like, like I was going slow. But y'all, it helped. I went all the way to the other end. Yes, I did. So that was it. I didn't have to do it anymore. I got my swim call that same day and that was it. But yeah, like, they give you into all of boot camp, like to like week nine to pass it, week eight, week nine to pass it. Like one of my friends, she was the last person to pass and it took her to like, I think a few days before graduation and she finally passed. So don't be like too freaked out. If you can't swim, you'll be fine. You'll be fine because nobody, nobody in our division failed because they couldn't swim. No, absolutely not. So then there's the gas chamber, aka the confidence chamber, as they like to call it. Y'all, the, the confidence chamber, it was cake for me. Like, I was excited to do it because everybody I talked to, they said that it was cool. And it actually was. Like, me, the only thing that, like, happened with me is my eyes started watering. There was people who was, like, gagging, finna throw up, like, all of that stuff. And I was just there, like, my eyes kind of burned a little bit, but... This is not bad. Like, I would do it again. It was very simple. They'd be like, mask up, cups up, and this is your cup. So none of your body fluid gets on the floor. And then you're just like this. And then it'd be, you're supposed to be like, Seaman Recruit. You say your last name, Division, whatever. Who ya? And then that's all you say. And then you barely get to say the whole thing. And then you're gone. 
So don't be scared about the gas. Let me not say gas chamber. Don't be scared about the confidence chamber. It's cake, probably. Probably. Cause you know, everybody reacts differently, but like I said, for me, it was cake. It was not, it was not hard at all. So then, you know, you gotta shoot that blicky, y'all. We were shooting guns. That was pretty fun too. For that, I think it's like three classes that you take. You learn how to like take the whole gun apart and then like put it back together. You learn all of that stuff. And then like the last thing that you do is actually shoot. And you can get different ribbons too. You can get marksmanship, sharpshooter, and expert. So I got marksmanship. I said marksman. Marksmanship? Is it marksmanship? I got marksman, okay? So I had a I have a ribbon when I wear my NSUs or when I wear my dress blues. So it's like a blue ribbon. And then if you get sharpshooter, it's like the same blue ribbon, but it has an S in it. And then if you get expert, it's the same blue ribbon with the E. Like it's fine. That was my goal to at least get marksman. And I did, so I'm proud of myself. I'm gonna actually retake when I get to the fleet so I can get sharpshooter or expert. But for right now, I'm good with marksman. It's cool. So a lot of people didn't get ribbons. If you don't get a ribbon, like it's not a big deal. It's literally just so you can get qualified before you go to the fleet. If you don't, who cares? You can retake it when you get to the fleet. So it's not a big deal. Firefighting. It was it was actually really really fun. We put on the whole the whole suit, all of that stuff. We held the holes. There was times when water was actually coming out of it. Them holes are heavy. Like they're they're heavy. It holds some weight, okay? And people be just be holding it like, you know, kind of casually until like you you actually feel and you're like, oh dang, hold on. You have to actually like hold it for real. But firefighting was definitely fun. Firefighting was one of my favorite evolutions we did. Firefighting um and shooting honestly the confidence chamber was fun too boot camp was actually really really fun y'all it's boot camp is what you make it the people that you are around all of that stuff yeah so next for us we did battle stations battle stations they're actually going to be changing it back around to the way it's supposed to be to where you take your opfa first then battle stations because it's so dumb because right after battle stations you call your family and you're basically supposed to say like i'm a sailor like i did it but mind you, you still haven't took your OPFA yet, which is your final assessment, which is the running, like your final run and all of that stuff. And a lot of people, they do fail that too. So you're calling your family, telling them like, I did it. But technically you didn't. They done booked all of their stuff already. And then say that you fail your OPFA, then you have to call them back and say, hey, I failed. Like I'm not graduating when I'm supposed to. Like it's just sad. So that's why I'm happy that they're changing it back so it's supposed to be to where you do um the opfa first and then you do battle stations because after battle stations you switch from your recruit ball cap that you usually wear to your navy ball cap like and everybody starts calling you a sailor so it's like why are you getting called a sailor and you haven't done everything yet like that makes no sense at all but you know it is what it is battle stations i can't go too much into detail about like at all because i signed a contract specifically for battle stations saying that i, I can't talk about it to like future sailors and people going in and stuff like that so all i could say is battle stations is not hard at all the hardest part is staying awake okay because you will it's basically another p days you're gonna be staying up for like mm, 42 hours around here you're gonna wake up around 6 a.m you're gonna stay up for that whole day you're gonna go to battle stations at like maybe 8 p.m um which is like you know 20 hundred and then maybe a little before that, I don't remember. And then you're gonna stay up that whole time. And then you're gonna stay up until like, I think the capping ceremony, which is when you switch your raw caps, is at like 8 a.m. And then you're gonna stay up that whole rest of the time until it's time for bed that day. So you're gonna be up for like two days. Again, that's the hardest part is staying up. And battle stations is, overhyped so don't don't listen to what they tell you about it's so hard it's so this it's so that it's not i'm telling you that right now it's not hard you'll be fine you will be fine so now let's get into the opfa the opfa is basically the rdc assessment like i said just without the 90 second buffer so for me 19 year old female i had to do a 1445 one and a half mile run um 20 push-ups and a uh, minute 30 plank it's very easy i'm not gonna lie running is the hardest part and that's what gets a lot of people 
and it's sad because you know you make it so far you made it like nine weeks and then you're literally set back you only get set back like a week but it's still like it's disheartening you done told your family like i'm about to graduate like I, i'm almost there all of this stuff and then you wind up getting set back so it's 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 kind of sad i'm not gonna lie not even kind of sad it is sad but you know it is what it is everything happens for a reason but try your best to go in already knowing how to run or you know being able to do a little something then graduation i'm gonna try to show y'all a little bit of our graduation little clip or whatever Y'all, graduation was fun. The worst part is standing there at attention while they run their mouth and talk. That was like the most annoying part. But I was so happy, y'all. Like when we marched in, oh my God. It just like brings back so many memories. Like you march in or whatever. And then you hear the little beat. And y'all march in. And then they're like, eyes right. And basically you turn your eyes to the right and you look at the crowd so you'll see your family well you might see your family you might not but don't be like you know what i'm saying do all that extra stuff like but you know you turn your eyes to the right and then you look in and then hopefully your family sees you like it's just so it's it's a great experience like to know like dang i really did this i'm really a sailor like i did it you can't it it's no experience like graduation. I was so happy. I was so happy, y'all. Uh, I was like, I really did it. I wanted to cry. I really wanted to cry. So y'all have heard me talk for a while. I'm going to give y'all a few tips. And then that's going to be the end for the most part. I'm going to also go through a little stuff that I have wrote in my journal. So y'all can kind of see a little bit of that. And the inside of how I was feeling. So first I would say, wake up early so there will be some times where you'll wake up like in the beginning you'll be waking up at like 4 or 4 30 or if you have some type of, of appointment like y'all have dental that day or medical that day you're gonna wake up at like 4 4 30 so if you have to wake up then wake up early you have 15 minutes to get ready from when they call reveille reveille is when y'all wake up so they'll be like um get on the tow line so you get on the tow line and whatever you're wearing so you might be wearing like what you wore to sleep and you just get on the tow line you put your shoes on get on the tow line stand at attention they're gonna say whatever they need to say to you and they're gonna say okay you have 15 minutes go and you're gonna get ready if you already have your teeth brushed and all that stuff you're good like me i will wake up like 30 minutes before i will brush my teeth i will make my bed and um what else i do oh and wash my face so i will brush my teeth wash my face and make my bed and then I will already be good on that. So when it's time for us to get ready, I would just throw my throw my uniform and I'll be good. But towards the end, they didn't care like, cause you're only supposed to get in your uniform if you have something to do. But they started really not caring and they would just let us get in our uniform before, before Rev is even called. So I wouldn't have anything to do really at all. So I started doing that, but it just depends. You also need to check, like there's a place where you could look and see what you're doing that day because sometimes PT will be early in the morning. PT is when you're gonna work out. And sometimes it'll be early in the morning. So they'll tell you like, keep on your PT gear. Don't change into your to your uniform. And sometimes I will already be changing to my uniform. So I'd have to like take off my uniform and I have to go back into PT gear. It needs to get on my last nerves. So just make sure that you're like looking at the schedule. But also sometimes they switch the schedule up and you might supposed to have PT like later in the day and they'll change it so you're gonna have it right when you wake up so it just depends it really does so another thing i would tell y'all is if you're not like if you're stressing out about the runs or whatever the case may be yes like go in there already kind of knowing a little bit of how to run but they're not just gonna throw you in there expecting you to know how to run like you're gonna do sustained runs 
they're gonna be there's gonna be 15 minutes sustained runs and 20 minutes sustained runs so 15 minutes sustained runs you're gonna run at freedom hall which is like the gym and you're gonna run around the track for 15 minutes straight 15 minutes straight and that's it by the way when you do your mile and a half your mile and a half is 12 laps at freedom hall that's what it's gonna be but yeah you're just gonna keep running keep running keep running some people would duck off go to the bathroom and just stay there until it was done don't do that if you don't know how to run you better do them and in the 20 minutes of stand run, you're just gonna run for 20 minutes straight do it and it will actually help you it will help you increase your stamina and all of that stuff so i would definitely recommend doing that pt as well if you're not good with push-ups do that because i used to do like pt and stuff and we also got beat a lot so that helped me i'm not gonna lie it definitely did i went from being able to do 22 push-ups at the initial assessment to like 45 push-ups in the end so yeah it helps if you actually like apply yourself and put in that work okay also y'all practice staying up because you will be in class a lot they're gonna be doing like a whole bunch of different type of classes for you teaching you stuff and it's so hard like i could be completely fine when we're actually like doing stuff and when we have to sit in a chair like in a desk or whatever and we're listening to them talk me the entire time and then if you're falling asleep they'll tell you to like go stand up in the back and then i will be in the back still falling asleep standing up so it's kind of crazy you will learn how to sleep in the weirdest situations like after battle stations our petty officer he decided to take us out to go march because he wanted us to stay awake and y'all we was falling asleep by, while we was marching i was falling asleep i was like running into the girl in front of me it was other people like our guide on which is the one who holds the flag and like tells us where to turn and stuff like they i was guide on at a point in time but i hated it but she would like um hold up the flag or whatever and she would do this and then that's when you're supposed to that's when the rpoc is supposed to call like call them right march or call them left march depending on which way you're turning if that makes sense so she was falling asleep and like going into the grass like it was crazy y'all he just had to take us back to the compartment because we were falling asleep very badly another thing that i would definitely tell you is talk to people whenever i would go to the bathroom y'all it would be people who were in like higher weeks than us like i remember i was like week three week four and it was people in like week eight week nine about to graduate and I would, I would just ask them like what week are you and they were like week nine and i'd be like wow how is this how's the rdc assessment how's the opfa like i'll ask them all these questions and they would just tell me tips and tricks and all of this stuff it helped a lot like one thing they told me is to get cough drops cough drops help with your run me i don't know because i didn't even use them but a lot of people said that they helped so get cough drops and see if it helps you maybe bring them with you or have somebody bring like have somebody mail them to you because the next did not have them until the end like when we was about to graduate and we already did the opfa so like maybe y'all will get lucky and they'll have it at the next but if it don't if they don't have somebody mail them to you okay that's all i could say another thing is do not go to medical don't do it don't okay if y'all just got done running laps like doing a sustained run a 20 minute sustained run or something like that and your legs are hurting you and you feel like you should go to medical absolutely not why would you do that why everybody else's legs hurt too but guess what if they tell you that they're gonna do a bone scan on you when you go to medical just know be prepared to get set back if they have shin if they see like shin splints or anything like that yeah yeah they're gonna send you to rcu which is basically where you go to heal so you're not in a real division you're just on hold basically until you get better and then they'll put you back in the division but your division gonna be all the way gone been gone in the fleet by the time you ready to um start training again all right y'all so if i look a little different right now or anything is different a few hours have passed it's now like 3 a.m okay and I'm still working to get this video out so I can get it out at least tomorrow. Like, I'm going to be working. I know this video is going to be long, but I hope it's very, very helpful for you guys. Another inspection is static. And basically, it's more of like the RDC's assessment. Not, not like 
the RDC assessment, but it's like an assessment for the RDCs, if that makes sense, like to make sure that they're doing what they need to do. So basically, they're going to make sure that your fold and stow is right. Like your RDCs are going to check, make sure your fold and stow is right. Make sure your bed looks good. Everything is good. And FQA is going to come in there and they're, they're literally going to rip everything apart. Like you're going to come back because they do it while you're gone. So when you come back, everything is just going to be ripped apart. Like they're gonna, your whole rack is going to be messed up. You're going to have to re- fold like everything they're going to be checking to make sure that everything is folded exactly how it needs to be folded they might mess up your bed like everything is going to look a hot mess when you first come back and you're just going to have to refix all of it but like i said it's more of like a test for the rdc's but it's also for you too like you also get a score on it but yeah yo those are the main tips i can give you for boot camp just do what your rdc's tell you to do because you don't want to argue with them like it's not worth it at all like if they say do something yes chief yes petty officer i i chief i i petty officer like there was times like that where a ch i remember one time a chief had said something to me and like he said that i was ignoring him and i really didn't hear what he said like i didn't know he was talking to me like i was just doing my own thing and he was like he was literally yelling at me and i was not listening like i was doing something completely different and he was like oh yeah you over here walking away like he was just running his mouth and i was just like aye aye chief and he was like yeah you better say aye aye chief and then he just went on about his business i'm like wait shut shut up but it like de-escalated the situation because I've seen a lot of cases where people will try to go back and forth with them. Now they're telling you, you have 30 seconds to hydrate. Yo, that is going to be a trigger for you. You have 30 seconds to hydrate because that's when they say when they're about to pull out that card and start saying, your first exercise is eight counts. Get there. Your first exercise is in and out. Get there. Like, y'all don't want to hear that, but y'all y'all definitely going to hear it. Y'all definitely gonna hear it. They gonna beat y'all. I'm telling you. Hopefully y'all don't get a be get beat a lot like us, but it's bound to happen. Just look at it as you're gonna get stronger and it's gonna help you in the long run. That's that's how I look at it. I'm like, whatever, bro. There's nothing I can do about it. Might as well just take it. Also, when you first get to the airport or whatever, like when you get to O'Hare Airport and you see the petty officers and they're asking all these questions and stuff, somebody's gonna ask, do you play an instrument? Do you sing? Like anything like that. If you don't wanna be in a 900 division, like performing and stuff, say no. Cause yo, I play the violin and the piano and I said, mm-mm. I don't I don't do none of that because 900 divisions y'all they're different they're different like they they call it drill and kill because they literally just march all the time practice all the time and that's literally it they don't do anything else y'all like their test scores are usually lower because they don't have time to study all they do is just drill 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 like it's stressful I talk to a lot of people in drill or not in drill a lot of people in 900 divisions and they did not like it at all. So keep that in mind when they ask you that question, okay? Here is my journal. It has a lock and key on it actually, but I just like took it out so I could read a few of these little passages. Yo, you could see when I started to get tired and when my handwriting was good. Hold on, let me find one. When my handwriting was good. Like I have better handwriting than others. So I went to boot camp September 14th. This one is from September 15th, so day two. I said, I finally get to go to sleep. I've been up for two days. I've been feeling pretty good because I know why I'm here. I did almost cry though, when I thought about my family and Zeno. I miss them so much. And 10 weeks sounds like such a long time, but we got this. This girl I'm cool with not even here no more. I could tell she really didn't wanna be here. I'm kind of sad, but it is what it is. She got in an argument with an RDC. Yeah, y'all, it was crazy. I think the sleep deprivation really got to her. My ass was falling asleep, but I was okay though. I'm probably going to cry tonight because I'm gonna be in bed along with my thoughts and I really just wanna be at home. This one is from September the 16th. Currently on my second day of sleep, as much as boot camp annoys me, it's not unbearable and not something I can't handle. I will be a sailor. Things might be tough, but I got this. Today, September 16th, I did I did urine samples and got blood drawn. They drew almost half the blood from my body. I was over there like, what the hell? 
I didn't like that shit. <laughs> so this is like the last one I think I'm gonna read. Today was cool. By the way, this is September 18th. Today was cool. I had fun. Our RDCs were actually joking around with us. It's Sunday. Tomorrow we go to medical and get the okay to be in the Navy for real, for real. We had some recruits from week eight come talk to us. They gave their advice on getting through it and I really appreciated it. I've talked to so many people who don't went through training, but to talk to some people who haven't graduated yet, but are about to was really nice. I know I got this. We got our initial assessment on Tuesday. It's gonna be the pacer test. I'm about to steal the show. <laughs> No, I'm just playing, but I'm going to do this for real. I'm going to push myself and we'll kill it on the first try. I'm going to graduate in November. The next graduation after ours is January 3rd. What do I look like getting set back all the way to then? No, I'm going to bust my ass on this test. I am strong. I am successful and I am a sailor. I'm going to tell you how medical and dental goes tomorrow. Everything will come back okay and I'm going to officially be a real recruit <laughs> okay i miss everybody i wonder how Zeno's doing aka my dog i'm here with him right now i'm so happy <laughs> okay i hope you didn't forget about his mommy i can't wait to get my first call i have to decide who i'm gonna call first oh my god y'all this one oh my god i have to tell y'all I have to read this. I can't believe I keep saying what I'm gonna do and then the next day I do it. Time is really going. Today we went to medical and did my vision and hearing test. The hearing test was horrible. It was so long. Last maybe like 15 minutes. I had to stand up because I was falling asleep. I wasn't the only one though. Everyone I talked to agreed. Anyways, I also got my dental check. I most likely need my wisdom teeth removed at the bottom. It's crazy. I also got my stamp saying I'm fit for full so I can officially train. They haven't been able to beat. I'm sorry, y'all. They haven't been able to beat us with push-ups or nothing because we weren't cleared. They tested my blood for all types of things like diabetes, anemia, and I'm all good. Tomorrow we go to medical again, but it's female wellness. So I guess they gonna check the goodies. <laughs> then we're moving. Don't know if I mentioned this, but during processing week, you're in a temporary house, AKA Pearl Harbor. We have to walk a mile with our bags to make our move to our actual crib. It's called USS Hopper. So I'm not gonna read too much more. If y'all wanna see like all of the ones that I have, I could show y'all because I don't know how many I have. I did not write every day like I was supposed to, but I definitely do have a good amount in there. I just can't read every single one to you because it's gonna take a while. But I could definitely, I don't know if I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I could definitely show y'all some of the stuff that I wrote because these were real feelings, y'all. Like, while I was really in here. It's kind of crazy, like, reading back and, like, remembering what was going through my head during those times. Like, I remember the first time when I was in my rack and we was in Pearl Harbor and I was writing and I was like, dang. I would definitely tell you guys to get a calendar because I had to make my own calendar. If you guys can see, I wrote one for September. Like, that was the day that I came. And then... Here's October and here's November. So I wrote like everything that we did for most of the time. Like I wrote, my first call was October the 1st. Wait, what did I write in September? Let me see. I don't think I wrote really th anything in September. Yeah, I didn't write anything in September. But in October, I wrote the first call. Mind y'all, I got there September 14th. So keep that in mind. So October the 1st, we had our first call. Um, October the 3rd, we had DMI. Um, Wednesday, we had test one. Also, you will take, there's two tests that you will take, like that are actually like paper or it's not a computer, but if, you're, if your cat card doesn't work, which your cat card is your military ID. If it doesn't work for some reason, you're gonna take it on paper, but there's two of those. So we had test one and PI one on October 5th. Um, we have Marlin Spike, which is basically like learning how to, I don't even know how to explain it, how to tie up the ship, like when it's coming into port and leaving port, how to tie it up to make sure it's secure. That's what Marlin Spike is. You you learn that as well. So then there's also drill inspections, like I told you guys, but that's mainly on the main people, like Starboard Watch, 
Airport Watch, um, Arpoc, and A Rock. Like it's mainly on them in the flags as well. It's mainly on them. Like we just have to stay awake and make sure you're in step. Like it's not hard if you're just in general pop and you don't really have a job. But we had drill one on October the 14th. We got our second call on October 15th. October 17th was our RDC assessment. Um, October 19th, we had our individual photos. On the 24th, we had shots and the static inspection. The 26th, we had PI2. 27th, we had live fire, which is shooting. The 28th, we had the line handling inspection, which is basically the same thing as Marlon Spike, but it's an inspection on it. We had division photos on the 31st which was Halloween. Okay, so in November we had, on the first we had test two. On November 3rd, we had firefighting. On the 9th, we had drill two and battle stations. On the 16th, we had the OPFA. On the 17th, we had PI three. On the 18th, we had drill three. On the 19th, we had T9, which is basically like this team building workout slash exercise i can't really explain it but it happens in freedom hall that was actually really really fun i'm not gonna lie at all that was really fun then the 21st we have photo pickup and clothing order and pickup photo pickup is you're picking up your photos like the individual photos you took and all that stuff you're picking that up anything that you order and the clothing order so this one I gave to my man. So y'all see what it says, Navy, United States. And then the back, it has your division. And this is the flag. This is somebody that's in our division. They actually drew this out. So somebody in your division, whoever's a really good drawer, they're gonna draw that out for y'all. And you pick which one you like the best. So that's that, division 418 gonna be strong because they always told us if you're not gonna be smart, you, you what if you're not gonna be smart you're gonna be strong but yeah y'all i love my division so i ordered one of these i ordered one of them that's a t-shirt and i ordered a hoodie the hoodie is mine i gave the t-shirt to my mom and like i said my man has that one so yeah that's the type of stuff that you're gonna order i wish i could show y'all my pictures i'll like probably insert a picture but i gave them all to my mom and I'm not there right now, so I can't show y'all. The last thing I want to show y'all is my training guide. Here's the training guide, y'all. And it just has a bunch of information in it. Um, everything that basically, it has like every week, like week by week, up until I think week, week five. It stops after week five. So this is the, this, yours might look a little different. This is the spring 2022. But yeah, y'all. And also the notebooks that I showed y'all, you get those as well this right here you get this from the next and they also give you i think one too from the um like when you're first going through everything like mpds they're gonna give you one of those i'm pretty pretty sure like 80 percent sure <laughs> boot camp was fun i had a lot of fun the friends that i made make sure that you guys make you some good friends because the friends that i made in boot camp we still talk now i love them so much they helped me get through boot camp most definitely just find you some good friends y'all and they'll make the days that seem never ending and just horrible they make them so much better i'm not gonna lie to you at all that's what i would definitely say that's like the most important thing and that's what our rdc's try to stress to us so much is family because in the navy like y'all really become a family and in boot camp that's where it starts like y'all become a family y'all are going through the same thing so it's just like y'all decide to come together and it took us a while to finally come together it was this one time where our rdc he was so proud of us and this is where he really like started to get really really vulnerable with us there's times where um like your rdc's depending on your rdc's if your rdc's are cool they will most definitely start to relax with you and start to make jokes with you or start to tell you about their personal lives and things like that. You just have to earn that from them and show them that you really want this, that y'all are a family, like things like that. Because the biggest thing was, like I said, showing that we were a family. It took us a while to get that. But 
during the OPFA, after well, after we took our OPFA, it was going into the retakes for the people who had failed. And we were like all in a group huddled up and we were all talking like with the RDC, with one of our RDCs and everything. And we were just all talking like about why we really enjoy our time because we were like in week nine, so we were about to leave. So we were just talking about our experiences and stuff like that. And um, just why we love our division, why we appreciate our RDCs, why I appreciate everybody around us, everything like that. And then we started talking about the people who are about to retake their OPFA and we started giving them like encouraging advice and trying to tell them like, you got this, like you'll be fine. And it like really inspired our RDCs to see that. It like, he was just so happy. And it, he started like getting more vulnerable with us and telling us even more stuff about him that we didn't know before. And it was, it was a really, really like, that day I will always remember y'all. Like I was crying, a bunch of other people were crying. Somebody went in the bathroom, started handing out tissue. We was in an integrated division. So it was males and females. And our main like primary compartment was the male compartment. So we obviously couldn't go into their bathroom. Like ours was literally right across the hall. So they went, so one of the guys went to the bathroom and started getting tissue and started handing out tissue to all of us because we was crying. Like it was crazy, y'all. There's like different stages of boot camp, And I remember like the last stage is grief because that's when y'all become family for real, for real. And that's when you like really have a connection with these people. And then that's when it, you come to reality that you're about to leave. Like y'all are most likely about to go to separate places unless, you know, y'all are at the same a school but a lot of people you're gonna be leaving behind and going to do different things and it's it's sad like i was really finna cry because my main people who i was really really close with they're still in chicago like my a school is in pensacola if y'all didn't know i'm an ao so my school is in pensacola and a lot of them they stayed in chicago so i was so sad i was so so sad i was like i'm gonna miss them so much like oh my god it was just and i was just talking to them i was like oh my god like i'm gonna miss y'all i really do i really miss them to this day they're visiting their families and stuff too now but obviously like we're still far apart that's like one of the biggest things it's just become a family because y'all are family regardless of if you like it or not there's people who you are not gonna like but y'all are still family because remember like when you go out into the fleet your life might be in their hands one day and you you just never know you never know what's gonna happen so it's real i know that i've ranted and raved and talked so much and i know y'all are sick of me like i said i hope that i've been very very helpful in this video i hope that you guys are able to take something from this video. You guys are able to go into boot camp more not like knowledgeable and know a little more, you know? Like me, I watched a lot of these type of videos going into boot camp and they really helped me. So I hope that I made a helpful video for you guys. Make sure that you guys comment down below. Let me know what type of videos you wanna see from me next. I definitely have a lot of different videos planned for you guys. I'm about to go back to Pensacola, Mm, in a few days like six days or so like something like that and i definitely have some more videos coming about a school and showing you guys my room all of that stuff so make sure you guys stay tuned like i said also comment videos that you want to see as well and i'll be back with some more videos i love every single one of you guys and see you guys in the next one bye